Humans and chimpanzees share many similarities, including the ability to feel emotions such as jealousy. But when it comes to expressing that jealousy, the consequences can be vastly different. While humans may resort to petty acts of revenge, or simply sulking in a corner, chimpanzees have the strength and aggression to turn jealousy into a deadly display of dominance. Take the case of St. James and LaDonna Davis, who made the fatal mistake of bringing a birthday cake for their beloved pet chimp. Little did they know that their act of kindness would unleash a primal envy, that would prove deadly. Like, and subscribe, to Terrifying Bites. In 1967, the Davises adopted Mo, a chimpanzee, shortly after his birth in Tanzania. Mo had become an orphan after poachers killed his mother when he was just a day old. The couple, who didn't have any children, decided to raise Mo as their own. Mo lived with them and was treated like a child. He was dressed in children clothing, toilet trained, and learned how to take showers. Mo even participated in their wedding, serving as the flower thrower and the best man. However, in 1977, when Mo was 10 years old, he showed his first signs of aggression, by biting a woman's finger. The woman filed a lawsuit but the case was dismissed by the courts. While living with the Daniels, Mo was kept in a 10 by 12 foot enclosure. But on August 16, 1998, Mo managed to escape from his enclosure. Local police were called to capture and return Mo to the Davises. Several officers attempted to restrain Mo but he was too strong for them. During the altercation, Mo put a huge dent in a police vehicle. He also mauled one of the police officers, causing severe damage to his hand. The officer's injuries weren't fatal but he did require medical treatment, and rehabilitation. The Davises claimed that Mo escaped because he had been frightened by an electric shock, that occurred while his cage was being repaired. On September 2, 1999, there would be another incident, involving a young woman that came to visit Mo and the Davises. During the visit, the lady reached her hand into the cage to pet Mo, and he bit her. The Davises, claimed that they had warned her, not to approach Mo's cage, but she didn't listen, and put her hand in the cage anyway. The Davises also claimed, that Mo may have mistaken the woman's red fingernail polish, as his favorite licorice. Despite their claims, the lady sued the Davises over the incident. This had been the third incident where Mo had shown signs of aggression. As a result, West Covina officials seized Mo and relocated him to an animal sanctuary. The Davises fought to regain custody of Mo, but they were unsuccessful. In 2002, the Davises filed a civil rights lawsuit against West Covina, California. The city ultimately agreed to purchase a home for the Davises, in nearby Baldwin Park, California, where they could live with Mo. St. James and LaDonna Davis had regularly visited Mo at the animal sanctuary, until it faced licensing problems in 2003. As a result, Mo was transferred to Animal Haven Ranch, a 22-acre non-profit sanctuary, which housed a total of six primates. On March 3, 2005, the Davises arrived at Animal Haven Ranch to celebrate Mo's 39th birthday. They brought toys, candy hearts, chocolate milk, and a raspberry-filled birthday cake for the party. They were sitting at a picnic table, next to Mo's enclosure. LaDonna cut a piece of cake for Mo, but before she could cut the second piece. She noticed that a chimpanzee had escaped its enclosure and was rushing towards her. The chimp was running at full speed and before she knew it, he had lunged at her, biting off one of her thumbs. St. James, quickly jumped up to save his wife, pushing LaDonna under the picnic table, which protected her from the chimps. With his wife hidden under the table, the two young chimpanzees, Buddy and Ollie, turned their attention to St. James, and started attacking him. While St. James was fighting for his life, two female chimpanzees, Susie and Bones, also escaped their cages, but were not involved in the attack. Buddy and Ollie attacked St. James simultaneously, with one chimp attacking his face and the other attacking his foot. One of the sanctuary workers, Mark Carruthers, witnessed the attack and ran to retrieve his 45 caliber revolver. He was able to get a clean shot at Buddy, shooting him in the head. However, Ollie continued with the attack, dragging St. James's body down a walkway. Mark was able to chase down the chimp, shooting Ollie dead. The attack caused extensive injuries to St. James, including the loss of most of his fingers. His left foot, most of his buttocks, both testicles, part of his torso, and parts of his face, including his nose and lips. His injuries were so severe, that a paramedic who arrived on the scene said it looked like a grizzly bear attack. After the attack, St. James was rushed to Loma Linda University Medical Center. This was a horrific attack. St. James suffered extensive injuries and spent six months in the hospital, including a coma. 
Over the next four years, he underwent more than 60 surgeries to repair the damage. St. James lost his nose and several fingers, and he now has a glass eye, and two slits in the middle of his face where his nose once was. In the year following the attack, the Davises continued fighting for Moe's freedom. They also went to court to enforce the 2002 settlement, that required the city of West Covina to buy them a home in Baldwin Park, California, so they could be reunited with Moe. The court ruled in their favor but unfortunately, Moe disappeared in the summer of 2008. Witnesses reported seeing him walking towards the mountains, but despite extensive searches by authorities and the Davises, the 42-year-old chimp, was never found. Although the incident with St. James and Madonna Davis was tragic, it highlighted the importance of safety protocols when dealing with wild animals. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. Thanks for watching. Stay curious and we'll see you in the next video. Click here to watch the terrifying shark attack on Henry Bors.